Hey guys, so I don't mean to call modern animals tiny, but they're freaking tiny when compared to some of the prehistoric giants that once walked the same ground we dare desecrate with our puny feet. I'm sure the ground itself is quite happy with the change. Take grass for example. If a 6 ton elephant walks in it, sure it wouldn't look too pretty afterwards, and it probably wouldn't feel too good either. But have one of those long neck freaks of nature tiptoe across a field, and that field's gonna take some real damage. The goddamn nurseryman's gonna have his hands full trying to fix the grass puree those 40 ton Godzilla fetuses would leave behind. But back to the initial question. Why do modern animals look so meek when compared to their ancestors? Why are the only remnants of dinosaurs freaking birds? I mean, you never look at a chicken and think, Ah yes, the mighty chicken, the closest living kin to the king of dinosaurs, the T-Rex. The resemblance is uncanny. Yeah, I'm not kidding. That's the T-Rex's legacy, the ferocious chicken. I mean, they have almost nothing in common besides that they both probably had feathers and had funny, useless looking upper limbs. So what's the reasoning behind this? Well, there are lots of reasons, so many in fact that I could probably make an hour long video on it. But for the purposes of this video, we're only going to look at three reasons why it might seem like animals are getting smaller and wimpier over time, specifically. Let's start with reason number one, mass extinction events. So it turns out that most animals actually get larger as they become more adapted to their surroundings. Take for example, every large herbivore you can think of, and as herbivores get larger, predators tend to follow. Think of the natural progression of life. We went from single cell to multi cell to complex organisms with multiple types of tissues and organs. As animals evolve and adapt to their surroundings, they usually get more complex and more complex usually means larger. I don't mean more complex genome wise, I mean anatomically. As animals get larger and start interacting more with their environment, more things need to happen to keep them alive. Things get really complex once you add circulatory systems, nervous systems, endocrine systems, muscular systems, etc. Heck, some dinosaurs even had mini brains in their behind areas. Well, kind of. It was more like a bundle of nerves with some other currently unidentified component. Some paleontologists believe it may have served as storage for nutrient rich glycogen or a more complex, larger consolidation of nervous tissue. Either way, at the very least, they had a substantial gathering of nerves on their back ends. Technically, you have something like a second brain too, in your gut, called the enteric nervous system. They serve different purposes though. So now to the part where all this contributes to a seemingly downward trend in size. So with all this adaptation, size and complexity comes risk. When an animal becomes really highly adapted to its surroundings, any small change in habitat and food availability can cause huge pullbacks in population and in some cases, extinction. Think of it as a highly specialized company. For example, big car manufacturers. So let's say there's a huge corporation that's extremely good at what they do, making cars. They're so good that they dominate the market, growing to an outrageous size. Everything seems to be going well, until there's a change in the ecosystem. People are no longer okay with gas-powered cars, limiting their food source dramatically. Governments start passing laws favoring electric cars, and you now have more competition. What happens then? Well, the company needs to adapt to its new ecosystem fast, or it'll be devoured by its competition. But adapting isn't easy. It's become so good at making gas-powered cars that switching to electric would take a huge amount of effort. They need new factories, new engineers, battery prototypes, money. And since their primary source of food, or money, has been cut off, they start to feel the burn. They have three options they can take. First, they can downsize, adapt, and pivot production ASAP. They can move to a more favorable ecosystem and risk it changing slowly as well. Or they can do nothing and slowly starve, go extinct, and be replaced by smaller startups who usually prove to be more adaptable. So I think this is a pretty good analogy because it's happening right in front of us. With Tesla quickly becoming one of the biggest car manufacturers around and throwing older ice car manufacturers into a frenzy. Though this analogy fails when you consider evolution and adaptation can't be willed to occur. Not without intervention from humans at least. So ancient giants didn't really have an option to adapt. It either happened or it didn't. And more often than not, it didn't. And because being smaller means you don't need as much energy to survive, and you can more easily adapt to eating new foods and new environments, smaller critters were more likely to survive. Meaning the smaller ones would replace the bigger ones and repopulate, eventually growing larger and more adapted themselves, only to be replaced again when the next mass extinction comes around. Another analogy you could use is video games. Imagine life is a roguelike with permadeath. So you'd get far into the game and you have all this cool gear and you're quite confident so you take more risks. But then you die only to get respawned with crap gear and a long way to go before you reach where you were before. So then it's not that you get worse gear the longer you play, it's in fact the opposite. It's just that every so often your progress kind of resets, forcing you to make do with low level loot. On to the next reason, which is easiest to prove. The next reason is just that the earth changes a lot over time. 
So this is fairly obvious, but the Earth has changed dramatically over the three and a half billion years that it's been habitable. Its atmosphere, gas ratios, and temperature have all been really inconsistent. All these changes make for a dramatically different landscape and ecosystem, creating varied wildlife of all shapes and sizes. There have been times, for example when dinosaurs ruled 60 million years ago, when carbon dioxide levels were significantly higher than today and the world was warmer, creating ideal conditions for more abundant and larger plant life, creating plentiful food for larger herbivores to evolve, and then the large herbivores provide food for larger predators. It's pretty obvious that if you place an animal in ideal feeding conditions, it's gonna grow, even if predators are still an issue. Large size is actually a valid strategy to fight predators. Even today, lots of species do it. The last reason we'll be going over today has to do with the first, and it's probably the most critical. So most of us know that birds can fly. If you didn't know that, then I don't know what to tell you. They accomplish this with an array of adaptations that help maximize lift and minimize weight. One of the adaptations that birds use to reduce weight is hollow bones and air sacs that greatly reduce weight without compromising strength. This adaptation is actually one of the many that they shared with dinosaurs. Although dinosaurs didn't fly, they did take advantage of this to grow to tremendous sizes without weighing nearly as much as a similarly sized mammal would without hollow bones. This along with their other evolutionary hacks allowed dinosaurs to grow to their ridiculous sizes. I'm sure that with enough time and evolutionary pressure, mammals could adapt some of their own hacks to grow to larger sizes. Like how whales use the buoyancy of the ocean to prop up their bodies and not get crushed under their own weight. Making blue whales the biggest animal that has ever existed, as far as we know. Well that's it guys, there are lots of reasons why animals seem smaller today. It has a lot to do with how life and evolution just happen to work. Just because it seems like we're headed to a miniature sized future, doesn't mean that's the reality. Besides, size doesn't matter, right? As the phrase goes, it's not the size of the cetacean, it's the growth pole in the blowhole. Wait, what? Must have been a typo. What I meant to say was, it's not the size of the organism, it's the adaptation in the population. Let me know in the comments what you thought of my thought process, and I'll give you something to think about before I leave. Just a random thought I had while writing this. Do you think mermaids would be huge? Keeping in mind all that we've discussed today, in the water, I think humans would probably take after whales, at least the way we have it today. We have near infinite food, no real predators, and a very sedentary lifestyle. Humans have gotten a bit taller over the centuries, and that's without the aid of buoyancy. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. As always, all the sources are listed in the description. Thanks for watching.